Hello, uh, I'm Mary Salverti. I'm a professor in the Department of Plant Sciences at North Dakota State University. And we are in uh, Fargo, North Dakota at the experiment station. And um, I work with cover crops and forages. And here we have an example of a variety trial of uh, 31 different cover crops planted in two different uh, seeding dates. And this is uh, part of a SER project. It's a professional development uh, program to uh, the idea is to teach and educate uh, different farmers and professionals about cover crops, how the different cover crops look like, uh, where are their functions in the soil, how they help soil health, how we can uh, uh, intercede them into soybean and corn and be able to get all those benefits from these cover crops. You probably wonder why we, we are interested in working on cover crops and we've been doing so much research. And the reason is we, we, have, um, we have been losing a lot of our top soil because of soil erosion. Especially here in the Red River Valley, uh, in this area, uh, soils, they are tilled and unprotected. Uh, we get uh, very strong winds in the, in the winter and we're losing precious top soil. And also because of a continuous uh, uh, tillage and also continuous crops like corn monoculture or very short rotations like corn and soybean, our soils have lost a lot of their diversity and they're compacted, the infiltration reduces, so when it rains instead of the water going into the soil, it actually runs off with nutrients and soil. And, and that's why cover crops, each one of them have different functions, but all of them contribute to improve soil health reduce ero erosion, uh, conserve water in the soil. Also in the spring, they can remove water faster. So soils that have cover crops actually dry faster in the spring. So farmers can plant earlier than farmers that are in conventional tillage. So the, the benefits of cover crops are numerous. You know, they're not only help soil health, but also can be used as a forage for grazing. Um, they increase the diversity of microbes in the soil and mycorrhiza, and also they, um, they uh, uh, produce a lot of flowers, which are great for pollinators. This area, is uh, the season is very short, so we don't have much time to grow cover crops uh, in the fall, but uh, we can see here which ones grow better. And if we can grow, uh, we can intercede them in soybean or corn, we can uh, lengthen that, that growth uh, time for the different cover crops and get that. So with the funding of CERT, we've been able to fund you know, all these educational activities. And what is it really important about seeing local information is that any farmer in this area, if they want to try or adopt cover crops, it's important that they see what works here and what doesn't work here. Uh, because things are very different in other states and uh, things that might work very well in different states might not be the same here. So it's very important that they attend these field days and, and these uh, workshops that we do so they learn about what things will work for them on their farms.